G'day guys, Keithy here. Thanks for joining me again. I'm out uh, in the middle of nowhere at the moment on these four wheel drive tracks, having a bit of a look around. And I thought what a perfect time to do a uh, two inch suspension lift video for you. So stay tuned guys. I'm sure you can see the big girl behind me there. Let's see what it's all about. G'day guys. Just had to throw this in here before you see the next part of the video. So the next part I um, explained about how the lift is done and everything like that. And I talk about the extension to my height sensor arms. So what I've done is in the rear, I've extended the lower arm by 48 millimeters. And in the front, I've extended the lower arm by 23 millimeters. And that is the extension to my height sensor arms. Unfortunately, I can't edit the video on my computer I'm having some technical difficulties there, so I have to make this video using my phone. Um, so bear with me, I couldn't add any music or any, any overlaying text or anything like that, but um, we'll get it out there and you guys can see how it's all done. Thanks very much. Alrighty, so we've got the uh, two inch suspension video. I had to find a hill somewhere to flex the big girl up, but I still haven't managed to lift the wheel off the ground. Um, time to have a look at what's involved in this kit, guys. Now I'm gonna put up a photo with everything brand new that's underneath this thing so you can see it all laid out piece by piece but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you exactly what's involved and you can do your um, your own thing on that so these are as you've probably already heard uh, in my previous videos are 285 75 16 mud terrain uh, so that's 33 inches in the old money First thing I'd like to say about this, guys, if you're going to do this, as you can see in here, I still retain my mud flaps. These are my wheel arches, and you can see I've been through mud. Don't mind the locking, I'm sure you've got that. There is no tyre rub at all. No tyre rub in the rear arch at all. So if you've heard before that you need to take mud flaps off in the rear, Forget about it. No rub whatsoever. That mud is two days old. And I've been around these tracks here and they're hard and they're rutted and washed out. And as you can see over here, this one looks pretty gnarly. It's got a lot of washouts in it as well, opposite lock washouts and whatnot. It's very hard. So there's no rubbing in the back at all whatsoever. And that's my boy Raider. In the front, it's a bit of a different story, guys. Um, okay, so what, what I recently did was I put nilothane bushes in my radius arm, as you would have seen if you watched my videos. Now, I can flex this thing up all day and not rub in the wheel arches. Now, that's not at full compression either. I haven't even got full extension in the back because I couldn't find anything big enough to actually lift a tyre off the ground, which I was hoping to do. But as you can see here, I don't have my mud flaps on. But you can see the damage to this inner wheel arch liner here. And that's from the previous bushes being buggered, and they were rubber bushes. So with these nolothane bushes, and I've taken this thing around a lot of tracks to try and um, get it to rub, and I haven't had a chance to get it to rub. So what I can highly recommend is your chassis end bushes on the radius arm. Change them to nolothane. If you're going to run the big tires like this, the 33s. Otherwise, there is no rubbing. Oh, you can't see anything in there. But there is no rubbing in that wheel arch whatsoever. The only spot that you'll get rubbing if you've still got rubber bushes is between about here and here. And it's only light. As you can see, I've still got all my trims on. It's just a little bit mangled up because the tires touched it a few times. But this, keep in mind, this has done about 30,000 Ks with these big tires on. And that is all the damage that I've got. So you just need to massage that inner guard a little bit. Get a bit of a heat gun onto that. And if you've got nolothane bushes, you are not going to have a problem with this. So obviously that sticks out a little bit, but you can still see the clearance in there. And that hasn't rubbed once this weekend. And I've been out here doing these hard tracks buried in mud. As you can see, the car was clean the other day. I've got mud all over the bonnet everywhere. <clears throat> Let's get to the nitty gritty details. Okay, so this is looking at the rear. What you'll notice here is that spacer underneath the air spring is angled forwards. 
So you do this, as you can see with the wheel down, that air spring is nearly still straight, perfect up and down. And that's the reason you need to have it sitting higher at the back and lower at the front. <clears throat> so these spaces, very simple as you can see, it's just a, a base and a top with uprights in between. At the back, it sits a total of 60 mils high. At the front, it sits at 40 mils. So in the middle, you've got your two inches, your 50 mil of lift. But you need to make sure you've got that angle and that'll keep those bags happy. That's an Arnott Gen 3 bag right there. That'll keep your bags happy. Next thing we move on to is bump stops and everybody's going to do this differently. This is what I've done. So that's basically 50 mil box section steel and I've welded that in as you can see. The welds aren't perfect but they, they do the job. Likewise with this spacer. So I've got the spring mounted to the spacer the same way that it would have into the diff normally. I had a, a little D-shaped boss cut out of the top of that and at the bottom. And I made a pin that goes through the same way the, the um, air spring does there. But you can do it however you want. I highly recommend bolting these down if you can. Drill through the diff, drill through your spacer and bolt those spacers to the diff. So if you don't have a secure fitting to your spacer, what will happen is once you lift the car up, all the weight goes onto the front and the spacer will try and flip forwards. So you need to secure that down. As you can see, I've just got a little bead of weld along there and that's enough to stop that spacer from tipping forwards when the, um, the spring's doing its thing. The next thing we move on to here, as you can see, that is my height sensor right there. And the only part that's modified is that lower arm. <clears throat> now what I've done is I've tapped a thread on both sides of it. So I cut it in half essentially and tapped a thread. That's a six mil you'll need to tap. And I've just put a bit of booker rod in between and a couple of sockets just to extend the height of that sensor. The exact measurements, the exact um, amount that I have increased the length of just this little arm, I'll put up soon. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, um, but it's around the realm of 25 mil. I think it might have even been 23 mil. Um, so it's not a great deal. Another thing is the shock absorbers here. All right, I'll go and get under the car and show you what the shockies are. <clears throat> so they're terra firma, two inch adjustable shock absorbers. You can get them quite cheap in the UK. You can get them wherever you are, no doubt. <clears throat> and I think they're fantastic shock absorbers. I normally drive around in the number two setting. That's quite soft. Um, I like a, a lovely little plush ride. But you can do whatever you want to do, obviously. It's your car. And then another thing we need to talk about is brake lines, guys. So you'll see up here, it goes from that hard line. I've actually got braided stainless steel brake lines. And that's in, uh, that's they're two inches longer than the standard ones. I had them custom made. I know you can buy some, but I just decided to go custom with mine. And that's what I've done there. Now you can see also... My ABS sensor is still in place up there. But if I can somehow work this camera, and you'll see that I've just pulled it out of its little mount down there at the hub. Just so when you're at full droop, that ABS sensor's not under tension. And that'll stop you from ripping your ABS sensor out while you're flexing. There's another good chance there to have a look at the spacer, the bump stop, the height sensor and the shock absorber. So it's very simple guys, you can see that forward lean on it, that's all you need. And um, that'll keep the angle on those, those airbags quite happy and it'll allow you to run the standard bump stop still. So there's not a lot to it guys. Have a bit of, don't mind the mud, I've been playing in the mud. It doesn't take long after I wash my car to get dirty again. All right, now as for the front, guys, I'm gonna have to try and go around to, no, I won't, I'll just, there's not a lot different to the front, okay? So with this height sensor on the front, <clears throat> instead of being 60 mil and 40 mil in height, so it's got that slope, you don't need to do that. The difference is where the height sensor, the spaces in the back are running front to back, you're gonna need them to run side to side on the front axle. That's the way that the bags are mounted to the diff. What I've done with mine, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, I'm a little bit sick. 
So my spacer for the front is just 50 mils, one height. It's not tapered, there's no angle on it. So it's the plate on the bottom, the plate on the top, and it's just got this, the um, uprights in between to make the total of 50 mils. And that's your two inches, that's a two inch lift right there. Um, you need to remember with your bump stops on the front, you won't be able to weld a block like that there on the front because if, if you've removed an air spring from a P38 or the front of a P38, I should say, you'll know that you need to get that little pin to go sideways to retain the bag. And I've also got my, my um, spacers retained using that pin. So you'll need to make sure that you can either take your front bump stop spacer out somehow whether you use a, a different bump stop or whatever you decide to do. So what I've used is I've got rubber blocks in the front. I've drilled a hole straight through it and into the diff and I've bolted that 50 mil rubber block down. <coughs> so the spaces are identical except for the fact that it's a one height and I've used the 50 mil rubber block instead of the RHS here, the box section, whatever you want to call it. The brake lines, I've done the same thing with the brake lines for the front. I've got braided stainless steel line in two inches longer. The height sensor, the difference in the height sensor is that it's not um, as much extra length in it. Now, I'll have to put these numbers up. I might even overlay the top of this video with the, um, the amount that I've increased the height sensor in the front. But what I had to do on the front... I'm going to need to show you this, I think. Let's go around and have a look. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. You couldn't even get the front wheel to lift off the ground. All right, so here's my front height sensor. What I had to do is I had to trim a little bit of the rubber off here and a little bit of the rubber off here. Then I cut the sensor in half. And I drilled into here, I drilled into there, and I inserted it with Kemi Weld. Now Kemi Weld is just like a, it's like a metal bonding agent. And then once that's set, I used, I drilled through sideways and put a, um, a little retaining clip through there. I don't know if you can see that very well. Just as another backup measure to keep them in place. Now. Keep in mind, I made this lift kit in 2012, and it's been on two P38 Range Rovers. This is the second one that it's been on. So this is testament to that the fact that um, it is solid, it's reliable, and it works. And as you'll see up here, there's my spacer. You can see there's a little bit of angle on the airbags, but that's nothing to worry about because you're not sitting at that height all the time. Obviously, this wheel is flexed up quite a lot at the moment. Still not enough to lift it off the ground, but it's flexed up a bit. Don't mind the zip tie on that either, guys. I've just got that in there for, for a bit of insurance. But you can see I've used the rubber block there, and that's bolted down to the pad that it sits on. So all standard bump stops, longer brake lines, a flat spacer, and the terra firma plus two inch shock absorbers there, and then the height sensor mods. And that's all I've done. There's no rocket science in all of this. It's pretty basic. What you may have to do once you've finished this entire kit is you're probably going to have to um, somehow use maybe Story Wilson's software or if you have a Nanocom or a Faultmate MSV or anything like that, you may find that you'll have to play with your heights a little bit in order to get the, um, the suspension to sit level. I didn't have to do it with this car. And um, I didn't have to do it with my previous Range Rover that had this lift kit on it. But um, everyone's different. So keep that in mind, guys. But otherwise, very simple. Don't be scared to do it. Feel free to ask me questions if you've got any questions about it. So what I'm hoping to do, I'll put up more information. I'll put the photo up that's got all of my lift kit laid out on the ground. So you can see everything that went into it. And also the height that I increased on the um, height sensors, the length that I increased the height sensors by in order to get the actual two inch lift. So if you don't increase the length on your height sensors,
you're not actually going to end up with any lift at all. You're just going to have spaces underneath your springs. Height sensors are very important. Um, things to remember, check your clearance after you've done the lift. So flex the car up like you can see there. Just check your bump stop clearance and check to make sure that your height sensors aren't going to foul on the chassis or anything like that. You need to make sure that that's all clear. Um, and you're going to spend some time making sure your car is level if it's not um, sitting quite right once you've done your height sensor extensions. You can play around with your bump stop extensions with the, um, excuse me, with the pads that are on your diff. You don't have to do it that way. I'm sure you guys are pretty creative. You can do it for yourself. You might find something better or easier to do that might suit your needs a little bit better. Um, and yeah, you'll get quite a lot of flex out of these things. That's nowhere near lifting a wheel up at the moment. So I'll go for a little drive around now and see if I can find something in some way where I can actually lift one of these wheels off the ground and I'll, um, I'll show you. Any questions, feel free to uh, let me know, guys, and I'll answer them as I can. But otherwise, very simple kit. Don't be afraid to do it. It's well worth doing. And that's got a lot of Ks on it, and they're very hard kilometres that I've driven on this car. It's all of this type of four-wheel driving you see here. Excuse the finger over the camera there. So hills like this don't look like much on a camera because I'm six foot tall and the camera's at my height. But that's a very steep hill. They're very big washouts. And that's the kind of stuff that'll get tires lifting off the ground. Now, if I had someone filming for me, I'd probably be able to show you a little bit better. But the old mountain goat border collie will be able to show you now how steep it is. We'll go and have a little bit of a look around and see if I can find some way of lifting a wheel off the ground. This thing doesn't like lifting wheels anymore. It, it keeps them very, very well planted on the ground. I think the advantage is getting the height on your spaces right and your bump stops as well to make the most of everything that those long travel shock absorbers can give you. Let's go for a drive. Soft in there, see there's a bit of bit of yeah, a bit of uh, moisture.
Okay guys, so <laughs> I'm having a lot of trouble here trying to lift the wheel so that I can show you um, how far the suspension will go. This is about as close as I can get right now given that the uh, the sun's almost down and I need to go and cook some dinner. I'm out camping at the moment. Uh, but you can see there that front wheel has got tons of travel and you're only just seeing the ring on that airbag. And you can see this one is tucked right up in there, right up in the guard there at the moment. So that's pretty close. And you can see also, if I go walking through the bush, that that left rear, I'll have to walk around the other way. She's uh, she's fairly, fairly down there. And the right rear here is also tucked well up in the guard. Still got a bit more to go there. And as you can see here, it's well clear of that mud flap, so you don't have to worry of that. And the uh, the wheel travel is very impressive in this um, in this left rear. Now, you can't even see the ring on that bag yet. So this left rear has got more to go before it starts to lift off the ground. It's quite impressive um, how much it changes them, given that you're still using the same springs. It's just about making the most of the springs and the shock absorbers. So that's pretty unreal right there. I'm gonna try and turn the car around and get the other side flexing up so you can see what it looks like from the other side. Okay guys, so yeah, I've managed to um, get some flex out of the rear, but I've, it's, the, the tire's still on the ground. There's not a lot else I can do out here. I've driven up the wall here um, to the point where that front is tucked up nicely. But you can see the rear's still got a little bit more to go, but it gives you a good idea, guys, of what to expect when you've done your two inch lift. There's still more in that bag before it's all the way down. But it's, um, yeah, it's rather impressive what these things will do with a bit of suspension lift. Just something for you to have a look at and enjoy.